You're watching CBS News Los Angeles, The Rundown. Hello, everyone. I'm Ross Palumbo, and here's a look at your top stories at this hour. Former football star and accused murderer O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76 after a battle with cancer. His fame and infamy spanned across the decades. A football star who became a media sensation. He won the Heisman Trophy at USC before an 11 season NFL career with the Buffalo Bills and the San Francisco 49ers. In 1973, he was the first player to rush more than 2,000 yards in a single season. After retiring from the league, he launched a successful career as a sports broadcaster, film star, and ad pitchman. But in June of 1994, the world watched police chase his white Bronco across L.A. freeways. His ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman, were found stabbed to death. Simpson was accused of their murders, and his televised trial became a global event. And of course, the infamous moment at the trial that I think none of us could ever forget was the day he tried on the glove right. and that the glove did not fit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. And not guilty of the crime of murder. A jury finding him not guilty, but his reputation was forever tarnished. In a civil lawsuit from the victim's families, he was found liable and ordered to pay millions of dollars in damages. In later years, his book, If I Did It, garnered headlines and he served prison time for a 2007 Las Vegas robbery. He served nine years in prison before he was paroled in 2017. His family said when Simpson died, he was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. And again, O.J. Simpson dying today at 76 years old. The O.J. Simpson trial shocked the entire world, and downtown L.A. was ground zero, of course. My former colleague, investigative reporter David Goldstein, covered that story for years. O.J., are you a suspect? David, I told you before he wasn't going to say anything. I know you got to ask the question, but give us a break. That was David asking the question, of course. We spoke with him earlier on Zoom about how this case affected the entire legal system here in Los Angeles. It really showed the problems not only in Los Angeles, but in um, cities all across the country, the distrust of people uh, in the criminal justice system. So people were just riveted, and obviously because O.J. Simpson was prior to that, um, famous for being an athlete, a spokesperson, uh, an actor, and just somebody who a lot of people admired. He had the biggest attorneys in town, and over and over and over, and, and he kept bringing another one and another one and another expert, uh, going up against a, an underfunded um, DA's office. Nobody could go up against that kind of money and those kind of experts, and you basically had two deputy DAs going up against the Dream Team, and that certainly had a lot to do, I think, with what the final verdict was. And joining me right now is KCAL Sports Director and NFL legend in his mm -hmm. own right, Jim Hill. Jim, thanks for giving us a few minutes. What are your immediate reactions? They're, <clears throat> excuse me, they're mixed. I mean, you know, we're still grieving the loss mm -hmm. of, of two loved ones and things like that. But I do know that there are a lot of people who are not, dis who are not sad, mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, there are a lot of people who, in their hearts, really, uh, believe that he was guilty. Mm -hmm. And they are very upset at the result of, of the trial. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's, there's always going to be those mixed feelings, but there's always going to be more on the negative side as opposed to the uh, positive side. He was a great football player. Mm -hmm. He built, a, he, he had a great stamp of approval at leaving the NFL. Mm -hmm. But locally in this community and around the, and around the country a, a lot of people are still very upset at the final decision you know it's so interesting jim because i remember growing up and you remember because your careers overlapped mm -hmm. he was beloved across the oh, country yeah. he was a, a famous player especially from the bills um what did you meet him during the times that your careers overlapped and what were your thoughts of him before the trial what do you remember from i that? remember when i first when i first uh, saw him and met him and, and talked to him he was bigger than life mm -hmm. because when someone has done the things that he had that he did up to that point uh were just you just my goodness mm -hmm. and i know of individuals who played against him 
that when they walked out on the field to play against him, here's O.J. Simpson on the other side. So he's right. bigger than life. Right. So he's not just mm -hmm. a normal NFL mm -hmm. player. And so on the field, that served to his advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are a lot of people who uh, know of the personal side, mm -hmm. and they know how, how destructive and how evil that personal side uh, was. And they maintain that uh, to this day. Well, you know, he was so well known here in Los Angeles. He became a, a movie star. He was involved in culture in, in so many ways. Did your opinion of him even before the trial start to shift and change a little bit as you uh, began to hear more of him? You certainly have colleagues that interacted with him. Well, when you have, when you have the professional side, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. And you admire that and you, yeah. you say, wow, this is really terrific. But when you know things on the personal side, mm -hmm. that's, that's quite different. And when you hear things, and sometimes you see things, mm -hmm. uh, then that, that really uh, tells you a whole lot about that particular person. But um, this is gonna be talked about for a long, long time to come. There are some, there's still some people to this day who are very, very angry at the, at the verdict, at the decision. And so um, they are not, and I've talked to several people, and when we talked about you know, what happened to OJ today, mm -hmm. they said, well, you know, it's the way it is. They were not very sad about it. You know, you have such a unique perspective, Jim, on so many things. During the chase, when it all mm -hmm. first started, tell us about where you were and what was going through your head at that moment. That's when really the entire world's attention was captured. It's really amazing you asked that question because our studios here mm -hmm. were in Hollywood. Yeah. And I lived closer to that. So I, I heard about it and I, I get on the phone and I call the assignment desk and call the station and I'm on my way to the station. Mm -hmm. And we're talking on the phone and talking on the phone. So I get to the station and now I get from the, uh, the station and I'm on my way to where he lives. Mm -hmm. And I get over there and, and, we get, and we get there and then there's all this mass, this massive thrust of police cars and, mm -hmm. and, and people coming from down the streets and running and trying to find out what's going on and things Choppers like that. Choppers overhead, everything. Was Choppers, I mean, it, it was just everything. Mm -hmm. It was so bad that the police officers told me when I drove up, they said, Jim, you can't get in. There's, mm. you know, it's, it's crowded, it's too crowded. So I turned around and went back to the station uh, on Sunset Boulevard. I'll never forget that uh, as long as I live because of the people that were in front of his home, mm -hmm. they were uh, chanting. Uh, and, I, and I must say that there were the, the, the chants were not, were not positive mm. because a lot of people knew of and had seen uh, some of the things that had happened and heard some of the things that had happened uh, in the home. And it's, uh, it's, it's something that, that we will never, ever forget. And then, of course, there was the infamous trial. It just seemed to go on and on and on. Everyone was glued. Yeah. People, millions of people were watching it as it happened. What were your thoughts during all of that? Were you starting to think about his innocence? Were you thinking about him as the football player, as the star, as, or thinking of the person you knew? What were you thinking during that time? Uh, the first thing I thought about were the individuals that we lost. Because mm -hmm. um, sometimes uh, when, you, when you talk in terms of what happened then, right. uh, we forget about those that, that we lost. And all the attention was, was, was placed on, on him. Mm -hmm. But the individuals that we lost at a very, very young age, they, they had their whole life in front of them. There was so much to be learned, so much to, to do, so many things to, to see and so many places to go. And to have their lives uh, cut short like that is really um, um, a tragedy. And this is something that we will never forget. Mm -hmm. And people, and I know sometimes there, people will talk about, well, there, there was a line drawn about you believed and you didn't believe. Mm -hmm. Well, there are more, there are more believers uh, than, than disbelievers. And it's just, it's just a shame that we have, to, we have to live this over every year because it's, it's something that when you are around it, mm -hmm. you, you were enthralled with what was going on. And then when you sat back and you thought about it, you said, my goodness. We lost two people. And then when you started yeah. thinking, Russ, about the, 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 the and I don't, I'm not trying to be overly uh, uh, talking about it here, mm -hmm. but when you think about it and talk about the, the crime scene and the blood and this and what and how it was, it was mm -hmm. it's just, it just leaves you speechless. You never forget it. Mm -hmm. But we learn from it. 
Yeah, we certainly did. We learned, we learned a lot from this, yes, for sure. You know, I was on the other side of the country in Indiana on my first reporting job when mm -hmm. the verdict came down, and I remember that moment like it was yesterday. Where were you? Were you at the courthouse? Were you at the broadcast center? And was, what, what was going through your mind? I was uh, downtown at the courthouse mm -hmm. and was standing outside, and we could, we could hear, it's, the, the, the verdict is coming, the verdict is coming. Mm -hmm. And when the, when the verdict was announced, people started crying. Not only women crying, men started to cry. Other people were saying, oh no. Other people were saying, how could they do that? Mm -hmm. Other people were saying, this is just off. I mean, yeah. every reaction that you could think of from a negative standpoint was right there. And it's something that the people that were there and the people that I saw, we'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. We'll never forget seeing, seeing everyone cry uh, because of not only that we lost a couple of people, mm -hmm. but how we lost mm -hmm. those people. The families. And yeah, the families mm -hmm. and, the, and the, the, the way that it happened. And when people describe to you uh, the, 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 the crime scene, some people couldn't, couldn't stand to hear it, even if you were just talking to them about it, yeah. much less if they were to see pictures of it. We all lived it uh, so closely for so long. Now, you uh, really, briefly before I let you go, did you see O.J. after that? No. Never. No. You never had no. The no. Okay. Uh, no. Never did. Uh, he was you know, often when he went to. Fl I think he went to Florida and then went to mm -hmm. to, to, the, uh, out to Nevada and, and stuff like that. Um, some people, some people still um, um, look him, look at him uh, in a in a positive light in some kind of way. Mm -hmm. How they can do that, I don't know. All right, Jim Hills. Sports director and NFL legend. Thank you so much for My talking pleasure, about buddy. it. I know it's a lot to go through. Thank you for having me. Thanks yeah. a lot, Jim. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your insights, of course. And stay with CBS News Los Angeles for continuing coverage of the death now of O.J. Simpson. L.A. federal prosecutors have now filed criminal charges against Shohei Otani's former translator, Ipe Mizuhara, is accused of stealing millions of dollars from Otani to fuel his gambling debt. The evidence we've gathered over the past few weeks has demonstrated that in total, Mr. Mitsuhara stole over $16 million from Mr. Otani's account in order to pay for these illegal sports bets. U.S. Attorney Martin Estrada said Mizuhara had a close relationship with the Dodgers star and unique access to his personal information. Mizuhara is also accused of lying to bank officials and impersonating Otani to get those big wire transfers approved. Mr. Otani is considered a victim in this case. There is no evidence to indicate that Mr. Otani authorized the over $16 million of transfers from his account to the bookmakers. Mr. Otani has stated that he did not authorize these transfers, that he did not grant Mitsuhara access to his account. Otani fired his translator last month after learning about the theft. Major League Baseball has now opened a formal investigation of its own. Turning now to your weather, warm temperatures for much of our area, but it won't last for long as you can see here in Santa Monica. It looks like getting a little socked in there. KCAL News meteorologist Paul Diano is tracking wet weather that is headed our way. Here are your next weather headlines for Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. Fog continues. Low cloud cover continues right at the coastline, uh, whereas most of us have had morning and afternoon sunshine, a light onshore breeze today. Uh, kept temperatures down and kept it pretty cloudy right along the immediate coast. Tomorrow morning, everybody's cloudy, but today we're still warm inland. And as much as we all want it to change, uh, the forecast has not changed. It's still going to be soggy this upcoming weekend. Rain is likely. West facing beaches, clouds hanging on like half a mile inland. That's it. The rest of us are sunny. Orange County, some clouds right along the coastline as well. Not even as far inland as the 405, uh, but they are there at the beach. Our ridge is moving out. A storm from the Gulf of Alaska is moving in. This time of year, they typically go through the Pacific Northwest. We never even hear about them. But with the ridge leaving, there's nothing blocking it. It's going to dive all the way down and give us a rain chance uh, coming up on Saturday and perhaps also Sunday. So today, the warmest day of like the next 10 days at a minimum. Chino, Riverside 89, Claremont 83, San Bernardino 87, Los Angeles 79, Simi Valley 81, cooler at the beach, upper 60s there. Extended forecast calls for 
Two wet days. They are Saturday and Sunday. Early next week, we're not going to be as warm, but the sunshine comes back. Today's high 79. For our valleys, as warm as 87 degrees today. Stronger ocean breeze will shave 13 degrees off of that high tomorrow. But the bigger change is that rain chance and much cooler weather moving in this weekend. That's your forecast. All right, that's our forecast. Rain ahead. This has been the rundown. Thanks so much for joining us. We will be back live at 3 o'clock right here on CBS News Los Angeles.